Hi, I'm Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver. You know, across the United States, Dr. Energy Saver employees work every day to make homes just like yours more energy efficient and comfortable. And with the insulation materials that we use uh, on a daily basis, there's a wide variety of different materials that we use, uh, we think about the fire uh, retardant qualities of these materials. What would happen if there were a fire? And so today we're going to be demonstrating uh, that by testing a lot of these different insulation materials with this torch and really pointing that flame right at that insulation at, for a worst case scenario to see what would happen. First we're going to test fiberglass bats and as you can see fiberglass just melts away and yields to the flame and it will allow the front flame to get to framing members. Now let's see when we turn the fiberglass bat around if we had fire from the uh, the heated side of the house, which the, the paper goes to the heated side, well, what would happen there? And we can see that we would quickly have a fire, and that is a problem. Now we're going to test some blown fiberglass insulation, and we don't expect it to be a lot different than the fiberglass bats, and sure enough, it's not. Uh, as you can see, the flame is burning a hole in it, and essentially melting the fiberglass away. And so if there were a fire, this would allow the superheated air to penetrate the walls and get to the remaining framing and sheathing. Cellulose insulation is recycled uh, paper, mostly newspaper, and you would think that that would burn uh, very easily, but it's treated with a fire retardant and <clears throat> It is not burning at all. In fact, we're not getting a hole in it. If we take the flame away, we will see a char as a result of the uh, fire retardant added to this product. And let's see if we can burn a penny right on top of that cellulose. And there it is. We burn that penny and yet the cellulose is intact. And so if there were a fire and your walls and attic were uh, insulated with cellulose, <laughs> that superheated air is not allowed to penetrate and you're going to be much better off uh, with that insulation. Now we have a piece of closed cell foam insulation. So this is spray foam. It's hard. It's closed cell foam, uh, uh, often called two pound foam, two pounds per cubic foot. And let's see what happens to this under the same test. So obviously lots of black smoke. And when we take the flame away, it does not continue to burn. So that's uh, interesting. It does produce black smoke when something else is burning around it, but it extinguishes itself when you take the flame away. Next, we're going to uh, take a block of EPS foam, expanded polystyrene foam, and we see that it melts, not producing the black smoke that we've seen from the open cell spray foam. And again, as soon as we take the uh, flame away, uh, there's no fire at all, and it uh, doesn't continue to burn. Okay, here we have open cell spray foam, and this is often called half pound foam. It's one half pound per cubic foot. And we have a sample here, and we're gonna see what happens. And it's a similar result as on the closed cell foam. Lots of black smoke. And we take the flame away. And it continues to burn, and eventually goes out. So. Uh, on these uh, spray foams, uh, they will burn if uh, there is a fire. Uh, will they burn on their own? Apparently not. However, this dense black smoke comes off of them, and that's why there's codes involving uh, thermal barriers and ignition barriers on open cell foam left exposed uh, to living spaces, um, and that they have to be behind drywall and so forth, or only used in, in places in the house where people don't go. Uh, here is a sample of what we call uh, Thermax foam. This is a polyisocyanurate foam, 
Uh, it has a white foil uh, sheathing on one side, uh, facing on one side, and a foil on the other, a radiant barrier on the other. And it's a different kind of foam. And so this is uh, supposedly uh, rated to be left exposed in uh, places such as a basement. A little different result as on the uh, open cell foam. And we're gonna try that again. And we're, we are getting some black smoke. And we take it away. Okay. And so that's what happens to polyisocyanurate foam. Now, this has this facing and this foil is pretty meaty here, that this white, white foil. So I'm gonna just see what happens when we hit this, the unprotected edge so we can understand the difference between the foams, the polyisocyanurate foam and the polyurethane spray foam. So I take that away and you can see much different result. We don't have that heavy black smoke and it goes out right away. In fact, it's a white smoke. So that's an interesting difference between the two products. Now typically for polyurethane foams, you would spray a thermal barrier on here uh, if it's left in uh, places in the house, such as a basement, such as an attic that uh, people can walk up into through walk upstairs. Um, and uh, I don't have a sample sprayed with a thermal barrier, but I do have a piece of what's called FSK paper. And I'm gonna put it over a piece of open cell foam. And we will see in the same uh, conditions that we did the other test, what happens. So we have a uh, different color smoke here. And it continues, this FSK paper has a craft backing on it, so essentially a brown paper backing. I think that's what's still burning under there. And we may have to call the fire department for this one. <laughs> and you know, there's a, a difference between a thermal barrier and an ignition barrier. Uh, thermal barrier being if there is uh, intense heat on one side, the thermal barrier will prevent the material from catching on fire. Ignition barrier being that if there were uh, sparks and so forth, that it wouldn't, it would protect from the material catching on fire. So the thermal barrier would be the more robust, uh, heavier uh, application, and the ignition barrier would be uh, less. And in the codes, there's uh, certain areas where you can leave foam exposed, other areas where you need an ignition barrier, other areas where you need a thermal barrier. Now here we have a sample of an open cell foam that is uh, supposed to be, it's uh, fire uh, retardant in some fashion, and it's called Fire Stop and it has a uh, uh, formulation that uh, supposedly allows it by code to be exposed where other foams cannot and just uh, now this is a very unscientific test and the temperatures uh, here um, are this is not a uh, official ASTM uh, testing protocol that I'm using here but we're doing the same thing to all these materials so let's see what happens when we do it to this material so we're holding it there and we can see it goes out right away as opposed to the, the other open cell foam that did not. So it's probably melting away a little slower and it's going out right away and we don't have the black smoke. So that does perform better, that's for sure. All right, are we having fun yet? <laughs> Here's two more samples. We have uh, EPS insulation. This is a white EPS. This is, it's made by fusing individual beads of uh, foam together. Obviously it melts away just like our previous example quite quickly, but it does not uh, remain burning. This is XPS, extruded polystyrene foam board. And this is made by uh, 
extruding through a die uh, foam into a shape. And we can see we get about the same result. And the XPS is continuing to burn and not performing quite as well as the EPS. And I'm going to start my building on fire. <laughs> it is continuing and I suspect it would go out except the OSB on my display is now burning. Now let's check the aircrete. We'll see what happens there. And you can see that, well, nothing happens. The aircrete is not affected at all. None of it is melted away at all. Okay, uh, while the team was editing the video together, I have two other materials that I'd like to show you and squeeze in this video. This is an aminoplast foam, and uh, it is, back in the day, it used to be called formaldehyde foam, and this is the modern version. And you can see it does pretty well in a, in a fire test. Um, I mean, it melts away pretty quickly, but um, it doesn't produce the black smoke. It does go out right away. Uh, this used to be called formaldehyde foam, and they have greatly reduced the amount of formaldehyde in it these days. Um, and there's some different uh, formulations out there um, used for walls. But here, this is what I really wanted to show you. Uh, this is closed cell spray foam, polyurethane spray foam. And this is closed cell polyurethane spray foam, same material, with a thermal barrier on it. So it's a sprayed on thermal intumescent coating. So just to remind you what happens to uh, closed cell spray foam when you burn it, that's what happens with the black smoke. And then here it is with the thermal coating on it, an intumescent coating. And that is absolutely amazing. You can see that. The coating actually grows, if you can see, that coating is actually swelling up under the heat, and that's what an intumescent coating does. It, um, it swells up and provides a, a protection against the heat uh, so that what it's applied to doesn't burn. So it uh, really works well. So a uh, thermal barrier on uh, closed cell or open cell foam uh, obviously prevents uh, it, it from burning and really performs great. Here is a denim bat. They make actual bat insulation for people who are allergic to everything uh, out of denim. They're recycled blue jeans, literally. And let's see how that performs. Well, that'll burn your butt, wouldn't it? <laughs> Not good. This is a small sample of fire block foam. This is one part foam that supposedly is okay to use in areas where it could potentially uh, burn and as you can see it is burning and is not going out <laughs> so that's a surprise that does not perform as advertised this one should really perform well this is looks like fiberglass but it's not fiberglass at all this is actually rock wool and it's a mineral wool and as you can see it does not burn at all it's nothing like fiberglass insulation again it looks like fiberglass but this uh, is actually the slag uh, from the manufacturing, uh, steel manufacturing process. And this material has been heated to 2,000 degrees and there's nothing left in it to burn. Uh, these little resin to uh, put the fibers together, but uh, boy, that really performs well. And this is actually a can-like cover uh, that is made from rock wool. And we can see that it doesn't burn either. Mineral wool is uh, very, very good. Excellent performer. All right, we have tested fiberglass from both the face side and the unfaced side. We have tested closed cell foam, open cell foam, open cell foam with FSK paper, polyisocyanurate foam, so-called uh, fire resistant open cell foam, expanded polystyrene foam, extruded polystyrene foam. And what we have found is that the clear winner when it comes to fireproofing is these last two, which are cellulose insulation, by far the winner along with aircrete, which is also 
uh, extremely well uh, performing in a fire. And rock wool was also a clear winner. Now the purpose of this video is not to say that there's no place for these uh, other products that are uh, losing the battle here in the, our fire test. Uh, we know that Aircrete and cellulose are absolutely uh, fantastic performers in a fire, but you know, there is a use for uh, spray polyurethane foam. I mean, it's expanding qualities, allows us to do things in a home and work absolute miracles. Uh, really incredible. Uh, there's a use for board foam, uh, EPS and uh, polyisocyanurate foam in certain applications. Uh, we use it in the right place and the right application and we can uh, accomplish some very important things in a home with these products. But when it comes to fireproofing, now everyone knows what's best. If you have a home that you'd like to make more energy efficient and make some cold rooms warm or hot rooms cool, and lower your fuel and electric bills, call Dr. Energy Saver. We'd love to help you and help you do it safely.